We had so much fun doing our video series on the Red Sea Reaper 170, and we decided we'd review this new tank, which is the Red Sea Max E170. Red Sea was kind enough to donate this tank to us so we could set it up and review it. I must say, it's a really nice setup. Uh, it comes in just two boxes. This complete setup took about 40 minutes to build the stand and to get the tank and light and all that set up, just about two hours. It was basically very easy to put together. Uh, instructions were easy to follow. So at this point, we're about two hours into it. The difference between this setup and the Red Sea Reefer 170 is that this system comes complete with the light, the protein skimmer, and the return pump. It does not include the sump with the initial kit, but that's available as an upgrade, and we're going to show you that upgrade in a future video. Now today, we're going to do the aquascape for this tank, and Elliot, who aquascaped our 800-gallon reef here at the store, is going to show you some of his techniques to help you create a better and more interesting aquascape for your tank. So let's get started. To complete our aquascape, we're going to use BSI IC gel, BSI accelerator, as well as aquascape construction epoxy. And we're going to be using real reef rock to build the aquascape. Now, real reef rock tends to come in pretty large pieces, so Elliot likes to break them up using a screwdriver and hammer to get more workable, smaller size pieces. And there's not a perfect technique to this. You break it, you get what you get, you get some rubble, you get some waste but you also get good pieces to work with to create a good aquascape. What Elliot's looking for here is smaller, kind of irregular shapes that he can use to glue together in the aquascape to create interesting caves, arches, and projections from the reef itself. Again, it's uh, trial and error. You're gonna have some scraps, some waste this way, but as, you, as you'll see, it really will come together pretty nicely. It's good to get the screwdriver down into the nooks and crannies of the rock and think about how you want it to break knowing that it may well not break that way. There you got a nice hunk out of there. Definitely takes a little practice but uh, like anything practice makes perfect. Now that we have all the rock broken up into smaller pieces, uh, Elliot's starting to lay them out, see how they might piece together. Basically, he builds his aquascape in sections, uh, starting outside the tank and then adding those sections into the tank and finally connecting them together. Now, working with smaller pieces allows the aquascape to be more open and actually proves easier to work with uh, to create an intricate aquascape. Elliot will use a mixture of the putty with the IC gel and then after the IC gel he often will spray on accelerator to help that dry faster and hold the aquascape together. Again this is not a rushed process, this is something that takes a lot of time fiddling and playing like a pieces of an intricate puzzle. Uh, it's not something that's done quickly. Here he's just connecting two small pieces together using the IC gel. Any aquascape requires a lot of trying different rocks to see how they fit together. And sometimes you gotta try three, four, five, ten rocks till you find one that kind of just works to do what you want to do. Right now Elliot basically just finished one piece of the base and by gluing several small rocks together he helps to create a more solid foundation that's not as wobbly against the bottom of the aquarium. Later you're going to see that he'll epoxy that base kind of into the tank to hold it securely in place. Right now he's building off this base, uh, starting the basic structure. There you'll see he's using the aquascape construction epoxy and then he'll put the rock on top 
And then you're going to see that he'll add some IC gel around that putty. And that helps to hold the rocks together and in place and give that putty a chance to dry. So the combination of the glue and the putty and the accelerator helps to hold the aquascape in place, give it a chance to dry, and just give it that added rigidity so that what you build will stay as one piece. Now you'll see the base is starting to progress upwards into some sort of arch or pinnacle. I guess we'll see here as this all unfolds. Now Elliot doesn't usually have a master plan as he starts the aquascape. It's something that kind of is a work in progress and uh, it depends on the rocks you have and how they fit together and your experience and what you can come up with. Uh, again, if you take your time, it's going to turn out much better. Aquascaping should not be a rushed process. And here you'll see he's using a screwdriver just to kind of push that putty against the two rocks he's joining to create a more solid connection between them. Looks like here he's building another piece of the base. And again, you'll notice he's using putty. He's putting glue around that to help hold the rocks together as the putty dries. And then he'll use accelerator again to help that glue dry quickly. This allows him to keep working rather than waiting a day for that putty to dry completely. Just trying to go around and fill in the gaps between the two rocks with the glue to create a solid connection so that the final aquascape is solid and you don't have rocks uh, wanting to fall over as you mount corals and work on the tank down the road. Now here you'll see he's joining two pieces. It looks like trying to create something hanging off sideways, which is trickier to do, but with this technique of mixing the glue and the putty and accelerator, you can do that and you can create pretty cool ledges uh, to mount your corals off of. It's all about just getting a good connection between the two rocks, sealing it up with the glue making sure that it's connected on all sides. And this is one reason it's easier to start this kind of aquascape outside of the aquarium. So you can easily turn the rocks and flip them around and inspect them, and make sure that you're getting a solid connection between the pieces. One part of this uh, technique involves mixing a lot of putty. Are you actually rolling? Yeah, I am. Oh. Hi. <laughs> Sometimes you can actually microwave the putty uh, for about 10 seconds. That warms it up and makes it easier to mold. Uh, so definitely that works. Don't do, overdo it, but about 8 to 10 seconds in the microwave makes the putty a lot easier to work with. Just want to push the putty into the gaps around the rock so that, again, you're creating a solid connection between the pieces. Now you'll see Ellie is trying to piece the pieces together to create an archway which will go into the tank. We're seeing progress here. All right, now time to finally put some of these pieces into the aquarium and start laying them out inside the tank.
First thing is just to get them in there, and then you can play around with the exact positioning of the pieces. Maybe another four inches at the most, four or five inches at the most. I want it to look like ancient ruins. Go. <laughs> You notice there's some areas where the putty is highly visible. What Elliot likes to do in some of those spots is to just glue in small pieces of rubble rock to kind of cover it and obscure that putty. It just helps the aquascape blend together better. There you'll see he's hiding a lot of that putty just by using that one little rock and a little bit of glue there. This is nitpicky, but hey, we're reef hobbyists. What can I say? I say you have a great tank. This is just little detail work that uh, makes a big difference in the final product, you know. Now it's time to add kind of a pinnacle piece to this uh, base that Elliot's created. He's going to use putty first and then use glue over and around that putty to help make the connection more solid. First you push your putty into place on the first rock, then push the second rock onto it, and then push them together. And then you'll want to obviously try to get the putty into the, filling the gaps the best you can flatten it out and spread it out between the two pieces. Obviously the more solid connection you make, the longer your structure will hold together and when your corals grow out, you won't have to worry about your rock or aquascape falling over or breaking. Sometimes you do need to kind of just hold the rocks together manually for 30 seconds or a minute just to make sure that the glue is hardening up and holding. A lot of that depends, of course, on the weight of the rock you're trying to attach. Heavier rocks are going to need a little more dry time. Looks like this is uh, coming together very nicely, though. All right, now Elliot's constructed the main pieces. He's going to start putting them into the aquarium and seeing how it lays out and how he can connect them together. It's been a couple of hours at least to get to this point, but I think we'll see that it's well worth it. I must note it's uh, definitely harder aquascaping to try not to turn your back to the camera, but that's part of it. To get in there and do the job, you gotta get around all sides of the tank. Nice thing about this tank is it is easily accessible from all sides, so that makes aquascaping a little bit easier. Now he's going to try to connect the two main pieces with the bridge, and we'll see how that all comes together. Try to get some more shots for you guys. Okay, now Elliot's going to use putty around the base pieces to help hold them in place and prevent them from sliding across the glass. This is very important to help with the overall foundation of the aquascape and keep it in place, especially since we're adding it with no sand or anything. Basically, he's just making good contact between the glass and the rock, filling up the void, keeping the rock from wobbling and creating a sturdy foundation. 
He's going to do this with all the major pieces that contact the bottom of the tank to hold them securely in place. And this still will be able to be taken apart. Uh, the putty, while it helps hold the rock, uh, if we were to try to remove the rock down the road, it still would come apart without breaking the glass or anything, so you don't have to worry about that. But definitely recommend this. We do this in most of our aquascapes just to make things more secure and sturdy. Now you'll see Elliot is putting the other main foundation piece in and trying to position it so that it works well with the arch piece that he created. Uh, it's all about getting the spacing correct there. So it takes a lot of fiddling and it's not something you want to rush, but once you do it, there you see uh, lays out pretty nicely. Now he's going to firm that up again using putty around the base of the structure to keep that in place before he attaches the main arch piece, which will connect the two base pieces. Now Elliot's going to attach the top arch piece to the two foundation pieces using again the putty and the glue and the accelerator to hold it all in place. Now he's covering some of that glue or putty with a little bit of rubble rock just to hide it and help those connections blend into the aquascape better. Again, this is just detail work. It's up to you if you want to spend the time to do it or not, but we definitely uh, try to do the best we can to create an awesome aquascape. Now Elliot's working on a little island to place in front of the main aquascape structure. Little islands can be great places to mount zoanthids, acans, all sorts of different LPS corals, even a gorgonian. Uh, and definitely nice to have something separate from the main aquascape and break it up. And it's easy to adjust it uh, depending on what kind of corals you place in the tank. Now Elliot's going to lower the jawfish cave slash island into the tank. Nice thing about this setup is that it can be relocated easily and moved around depending on what corals we place where. But he supported up off the sand bed some so the jawfish has a place to make a burrow underneath the sand and uh, be nice and happy in there. All right, now we're gonna add one final finishing touch towards the top of the tank. All right, so now, about three hours later, Elliot's finished the aquascape for our Red Sea Max 170. Um, this is basically the skeleton of the tank. From here, we're going to obviously place corals and cover it, and that will also change the final shape and structure of the reef. But what we have here is just a good skeleton, a lot of openness to allow flow throughout the aquarium. Got a little place for our jawfish to hang out. and. Uh, ready to start filling the tank with sand and water. We're going to do that in the next video and get it running. But now we've got the stand built, the tank on the stand, the light set up, skimmers in there, aquascape done, ready to set this up. So stay tuned. We'll have more videos to come. Thanks for watching, guys.